Okay, so I was beyond excited when Casey from Coffee with My Sunshine recently reached out to me and asked me to be a co-host on her new series, Using Trash to Create Treasure. I absolutely love her channel. I love her crafts. I think her personality is so sweet, and I'm sure you know her, and if you don't, please go check her out and tell her I sent you. If you are new here, welcome. My name is Kat. I upload every week, and I love creating decor on a budget. So... Hi, welcome back to my channel according to Kat. If you're new here, please introduce yourself in the comments below. If you're returning, just say hi. If you have not yet subscribed to my channel, I invite you to do so. I upload every week. I like to create decor on a budget using Dollar Tree products or upcycling thrift store products. If you hit that bell, you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. And if you like this video, please hit that thumbs up. It really helps my channel. And what are we gonna be making today? Okay, so like I said before, we are going to be using trash to create treasure. I used items I would normally either throw away or recycle. I made this really cute pumpkin and gourd sign. I also made these cotton picks that I added to a really cool jug I made. And I used three tin cans to make these planters. If you want to learn how to make it, stay tuned. If you'd like to know what products I've used, please check out the description box below. And with all that being said... Let's get right into the video. Okay, DIY number one, planter cans on a wood plank. I got this wood plank from Habitat for Humanity Restore. It was only 25 cents. Now one side had those weird looking holes in it, so I didn't use that side. And I really did a good job sanding it down with a Dollar Tree sanding sponge. I used this Waverly chalk paint in truffle. There was only a little bit left, so I added some water to it and shook it up really well, and it created more of a stain. And I feel these dry a little faster than a stain actually would. So I just brushed it on. I really didn't try to coat it completely. And then I took this mineral chalk paint and I basically distressed it. So I, you know, patted some of it off. I aimed towards the edges or the, the sides just so that it, you know, gave it that really cute distressed look. So I now am wrapping it in a wipe. That way it keeps it moist and I can reuse that same one later. I use my Waverly chalk paint in white and I have three tin cans that are used for tomatoes. They are about 32 ounces each and I made sure I gave all three of them a good coating. I actually gave them two coats and once they dried I added this Dollar Tree burlap ribbon right around the center. I just used hot, hot glue to put those on all three. Once I was done with that, I took this ticking ribbon from Hobby Lobby, got it on sale, so it was only $1.50, and I am putting it around the center of those burlap ribbons, hot gluing that in place as well. Then I take some twine that I got from the Dollar Tree, oh look how cute, and I cut three to size. I'm going to place that around the center of each of those. But first, I burn off the extra fuzz. And you know how I love to do this. I think it really makes such a difference. And I love the effect it gives it. So I just put it around the center. I hot glue the back. And I did that to all three. I let them dry. And then I went back and tied them in the front. I tied them into a simple knot. And I really didn't make a big deal of it. I wanted it to look like that. And I just cut off any excess, and there you go. I did that to all three, and I absolutely love the way they turned out. You don't have to worry about the back, because they will be getting glued to the wood plank. So again, I do this to all three, cut off any excess, and we're ready to move on. Okay, so... The next thing I did was I took a little more mineral paint. I wanted that plank to have more of a distressed look than it already had. So I went over it just a little bit more. 
Okay, so I took this plank and I lined it up on my grid to ensure proper spacing between each of the cans. Now, I apologize, I lost some footage where I, cl I glued these to the plank. I used Fix All Glue from the Dollar Tree as well as some hot glue, and I let them there to dry. Once those dried, I took this floral foam from the Dollar Tree, I hot glued it in place to the bottom of each can, and just push those right in. I use these um, Heather sprays from Walmart, 97 cents each. I got three pink and three white. Now I just basically cut them all apart and put them to the side and basically went pink in all three, white in all three, pink in all three, white in all three. And I just did that until they were all gone. Now I take this Spanish moss from the Dollar Tree and Yes, the struggle is real. Yeah, so I put each of those in those tin cans to hide the floral foam and just to add a little more rustic nature to each of one of them. Absolutely love those. DIY number two, cotton picks, jugs, and tag. Here we go. This is an orange juice container. I give it two great coats of the Waverly chalk paint in white. Make sure you get bottom and top. And I take this uh, egg carton to make sure you get the cardboard one and then I just rip those apart so I have 12 little cups and then I cut them almost like um, I don't know how to even explain it so just you can see what I'm doing but four little points sticking up and then I bend those points in a little bit so that they can hold the cotton balls now I have to tell you after I was done with this I like these more than the ones I've seen at the store oh, that's my daughter Isn't that's so cute she made a little pug and I loved it. So I took that watered down truffle Waverly chalk paint and I'm giving it a good coat. But I make sure I forgot to do this. So I went back and put a hole punch in each of those little star cups, I want to call them. That's what I'm going to call them. And oh goodness, I don't even know what to tell you. So check this out. <laughs> And yes, I actually spilled that all over my lap. It was a hot mess, <laughs> but that's true life, right? Okay, so here we go. I am taking those little pod cups and I am adding a little of that Waverly chalk paint in ink as well as hazelnut. I want to give it more of a dimension to it so it's not one flat color. Let those dry to the side and I'm taking these backs of two Dollar Tree frames like the little stands and I am cutting those to create a tag looking shape. So there's two of them and I'm giving them a coat of that watered down truffle paint. I use whatever's on my brush actually and I had so much on that brush. And now I'm using this very sharp scissor to create holes at the top of each of those tags to insert the twine through to attach to the jug bottle. Okay there you go. I painted both sides just in case you would see the back. All right, so now I'm taking some Waverly chalk paint in white and I am distressing those little tags on both sides. And what I'll do is I will take my stencils. They're about an, oh, 
No, I'm not. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is take my dried jug and use these Waverly um, stencil stickers. I've used one before and I absolutely love them because they're like sticky, because hence stickers. And I take this mineral chalk paint in Waverly and I love this color, especially with white. And I am just dabbing it on. And when I reveal it, you're going to see how pretty it is. It looks so good. I actually did both sides um, only because I didn't know which side I would like better. However, the back of it, I really made off center. So obviously I didn't use that side. And I used this side. Look how nice. I love it. I kind of went off the edge a little bit. So I just touched it up with white and it looked great. This is the back my crooked back. And then I took these stencils. I think I got them at Walmart. They were really cheap. They're about an inch big. Um, and I, I'm spelling out fall on one and y'all on the other tag. So I just kind of went over. I didn't really care. I didn't want them to be perfect. So I put the Y and then I gave myself a little space to put the A-L-L. -L. I don't have an apostrophe, but I'll show you what I used. See how I gave myself a little space there? So I take the O and I kind of like line it up and I only do the top right corner of that O. Here, you'll see what I did. And when I take it off, it kind of looks like an apostrophe. I think it'll do. And there you go. So I'm taking my twine and yes, I'm burning it once again. Love, love. And there you go. Look at the difference. Fuzzy, not fuzzy, fuzzy, not fuzzy. Okay. So now I am threading that through those holes on each of those tags. And I'm just going to put those to the side until I am ready to put them on my jug. So until then, these little pod cups are dry so I took sticks from my backyard and I am just inserting them inside of those pods adding some hot glue I do all that first so I take all of those and I put them aside until that hot glue is dry and now I am adding hot glue like a nice amount inside and I'll take some cotton balls I think I did one and a half in each one of those. I thought that was a really good amount to put in each one of those pods. And I can't even tell you how much I love these. I love these. Like better than store-bought ones love these. They look so cool in person. I'm telling you. And they were like beyond cheap. Well, cotton balls you can get for at the Dollar Tree, right? And the egg cartons you already have. And the sticks you have. And I just inserted them into that jug we made. The orange juice jug. Like this is so cheap. This is all like stuff you throw away. It's amazing. I love it. I'm so excited that Casey came up with this idea. Because it really made me think outside the box. And you could see I'm just tying that twine around the top of that bottle. And just put some knots in. And then I cut off any excess. And I just love how this whole thing turned out. So I added y'all first and then fall second because I wanted that to be on top. You can see here that I am kind of setting it up so that it would be a little higher than y'all. So you can kind of see how I put those on there. I wanted them to hang at different heights. And then I cut off the excess. All right, then I take my Mod Podge in matte because I did not want this shiny and I just gave the bottle a good coat because it is plastic. I was afraid that white Waverly chalk paint would chip off and I really didn't want that to happen. And I also gave a good coat to those tags. DIY number three, pumpkin and gourd sign. So this is our last DIY and it's just as cute as the others. So I take this back of a frame from a Dollar Tree four by six frame and you can see there's even like little notches in there. We're gonna cover those up, don't worry. I take my mineral chalk paint in, min mineral chalk paint in mineral, yeah, mineral. <laughs> and I brush that on and distress it. I will take some twine and put it around the side. That way I'm going to cover up some of those little notches that are out of that backing. And 
you can see I will add a small little bow. I made one just like how you would tie your shoes and I'm going to cover up that little hole that's in the back of the backing. Don't ask. It's really late right now. I'm trying to get this video out for y'all. Okay, so right now I am taking my letters that I got at Walmart. I don't know the brand name and I love to put them on my square. You have seen this on my channel before. I didn't have an N, so I used an H and I cut it. Look, perfect, right? So I put it on my square and then I lay it down and it keeps them as straight as I can get them. Um, and then I just push them off and then push them down. Now I did and in capitals because I did not have and in lowercase. And then I did gourds in lowercase. Now, the problem was I didn't have, oh, these are those little stencil circles from the Dollar Tree. And I took my Waverly chalk paint in white and I just painted on one of those little arrows. This was the feathers, arrows, that that wheel so I put that arrow in there and then I knew I had to cover up those other two little holes on there so I decided to take some cardboard from another frame backing and I cut a gourd and I cut a pumpkin now I just freehanded those they were not like I didn't trace them or anything but you could always tr trace one out from one you find on the internet, something like that, like a printable, but I just kind of freehanded them. I wasn't too worried about it. I took my Waverly chalk paint in moss. And I love this color as well. And I gave the pumpkin and the gourd a nice little coating. I did not paint them twice, just one coat. And then I take my Waverly chalk paint in white and I use that little brush to create the lines that you would see and you know, create the shadows and all that on the gourd and the pumpkin. Like I did in my last video, um, for the stem, I used little, I don't want to say leaves. What are they called? Like pine cone. They're called something. Well, yeah, of course they're called something. Well, those things, those little cone things. And I am using them as the stems. And I just think they give it a really natural look and I love it. So I just hot glued them on the back of the pumpkin and on the back of the gourd. I cut that one down quite a bit because I wanted it skinny, the gourd um, little thing. Oh my gosh. I'm sorry, people. Oh my gosh. I am just so out of it right now. Okay. So I glue those on with just some hot glue and there you go. Look, love, love, love. All right, so I take the back and that the actual stand on the back was not working. So I took a piece of wood that I had lying around and I used it as a stand. And this is it, the final reveal, my favorite part. I loved all three of these. I'm so pleased with the way they came out. I really was able to think outside the box. So I want to thank Casey from Coffee With My Sunshine for asking me to be a co-host in this series. And again, if you have not checked out her channel, please do so. You will be so happy you did. She's an amazing DIYer. She's an amazing person, and I love her channel. Also, there are some other creators that have joined us on this open invite. And go check out the playlist so that you can see their videos as well. If you would pick one of these three DIYs as your favorite, which one would it be? I'm going to say it's between the cotton picks and the three tin planters. I love, love, love those. So that's it, that's the end of my video. I hope you liked everything you saw here. I hope it inspires you to make something of your own. And if you know anyone that would like to make something like this, please share this video with them. If you have not yet subscribed, please join us on this journey and hit that thumbs up to help my channel grow. And as always, thanks for watching. Bye.